Bentham's utilitarianism draws on certain strands of the Enlightenment thought, on the materialist strands, on the Epicurean strands. He places all the weight in the calculus of pleasure and pain. And in fact, his key text, the introduction to the principles of morals and legislation, so a text that's directly about law and justice, a text that asks, what is it that makes a law just? And will answer, a law is just that produces the greatest amount of happiness for the greatest number, begins by saying that human beings are ruled by what he calls two sovereign masters, pleasure and pain. For Bentham, humans are motivated to maximize their pleasure and to minimize their pain. And he says, all of our actions, even if we say otherwise, tend towards these two, to achieve pleasure and to avoid pain. Bentham's idea of utilitarianism draws out the tendency of the Enlightenment to focus on happiness and refocuses it on this word utility. And it's important to understand what Bentham means by utility. When we think of utility, we think usefulness. Uh, you think of a utility room. It's where you have your washer and dryer. Utility means usefulness in our vernacular language. But in the philosophy of Bentham, utility has a very technical, a very specific meaning. It's a term of art for him. And by utility, he means happiness, but he also means pleasure. He means the good. He means interest. And for Bentham, this is the power of utility. It doesn't mean usefulness as opposed to, say, beauty or ornament, but this is something, this is a, a misconception that the utilitarians come to fight constantly. Utility, in this sense, doesn't just mean functional. It means a whole vision of what is good. So for Bentham, utility is everything good. Happiness, interest, the good, morality, all dissolves into his concept of utility. And he says utility is measured purely by the presence of pleasure and the absence of pain. So Bentham's idea of utility is a specific outgrowth of enlightenment debates about happiness, but it transforms them, it encapsulates every possible concept of what is good and wishes to dissolve it into a calculus of pleasure and pain. And so Bentham's concept of utility, this embracing, this holistic concept of what is good, what is pleasurable, ultimately revolves around the presence of pleasure and the absence of pain. And for Bentham, the morality of an act, the morality of a law, the morality of an institution is to be calculated. There's something very mathematical, something very mechanical about Bentham, both in his personality, in his writing, and in his way of thinking about morality. You could always calculate what it is that makes something moral. And this calculation is purely about maximizing pleasure. And Bentham says that pleasure has different aspects. And in fact, he's a, a cataloger, he's an organizer in the way that his mind works. You can read in the very opening passages of his introduction to the principles of morals and legislation, that he says that pleasure has seven circumstances. It's intensity, it's certainty, it's nearness. So in other words, he says there's these different ways that you can try and measure how much pleasure something has. It's intensity, it's duration, it's certainty, it's nearness, it's extent, the number of people that it involves. And so for Bentham, all morality is like addition, multiplication, subtraction, and comparison. That the scales of justice are measures of what is pleasurable minus what is painful. And any act is to be measured, to be calculated on this utilitarian calculus. Now, notice several aspects of this way of thinking about morality and justice. One, it is highly universalistic. It is, in fact, a progressive and egalitarian way of thinking about morality. My pleasures are just as important as your pleasures. And there's no one greater person than another in this calculus. And so Bentham is a great reformer. He's looking at English society and English law and trying to think, how can this society progress? How can this become a fairer, a more just, a more moral society? Only by maximizing happiness, by maximizing pleasure for the greatest number. So utilitarianism is 
universalist in that sense. Moreover, notice that it's consequentialist. The utilitarian calculus says that what matters is the result. What matters is the consequence. There aren't somehow rights or duties that are inherent in the nature of the rules themselves. What matter are the results. The ends justify the means. And so this is a way of thinking about morality that vests all of the moral weight in the outcomes. And for Bentham, those outcomes are to be measured by pleasure and pain. Thirdly, it's a materialist philosophy through and through. And this too, it owes to the Enlightenment. It says that all there is is pleasure and pain. It's an anti-spiritualist. It is an explicitly atheistic philosophy. Although some, like Mill, would work to at least politically reconcile it with public religion. Nevertheless, it is through and through a materialist philosophy that says all that matters is secular. All that matters is the balance of pleasure and pain in this world. And finally, notice in particular in Bentham's utilitarian calculus that it seems to be aggregative, that it aggregates all of the pleasures and pains of a decision, of an action, of a rule and would justify, would say that justice lies in the maximization of pleasure and the minimization of pain in the aggregate. So it doesn't differentiate strongly between individuals. And so, for instance, utilitarian calculus on the Benthamite model and the strongly uh, utilitarian reasoning of Bentham doesn't distinguish between my individual rights, but rather places all of the emphasis on the total outcomes, the aggregate outcomes. And so it could justify the violation, the harm, the pain that's inflicted on a single individual if the pleasure that's created in others, in the aggregate, outweighs it. And so that's the nature of Bentham's political and moral calculus. And this is a thoroughly enlightenment philosophy. It says we can reason about what is good. And it is willing, and in fact Bentham as a great reformer and political advocate, would see his philosophy as a radical and deeply relevant social philosophy that if carried to its conclusion would reform society, that would sweep away traditions, laws, these concepts of rights and replace them with a vision of a government that ruled for the greatest happiness of the greatest number.